Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to create a logistic regression model. So to begin, let's just look at um, logistic regression. What is it? So logistic regression is a linear model. Think of it as like the equivalent of linear regression, which is also a linear model used in regression problems. You can also use logistic regression for regression problems, but they are best suited and often used for classification problems. So in a nutshell, logistic regression is a linear model used for classification problems. And in a different video, I discussed some of the similarities and differences between linear regression and logistic regression. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I release a video on the difference and similarities between logistic and linear regression. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started coding. I have already done my data cleaning and gotten my data ready. And just to give you a preview of the data, I'm going to do strain.head. So this is what our data looks like. And this data set is for wine quality. We are basically looking at the wine quality. And we are trying to predict um, the quality of the wine using these features. All right, so our Y train and Y test is wine quality. Let's just look at the top 10. Or like not the top 10, like the first 10. So this is a preview of our Y training data. Now let's go ahead and import things we are going to need from model import logistic regression and just logistic regression CV to do cross validation as you are doing your logistic regression but we are not going to do that here we are only doing logistic regression and let's go ahead and instantiate the model so let's call it logistic regression LR and let's just use all the default parameters and use a random state of 42 and random states just allows you to get the same results as me or allows me to get the same results next time I run this code so it's um, for consistency so let's go ahead and um, we've instantiated the, the model and this is the part where we fit the model so lr.fit xtrain and ytrain so we have uh we are kind of done fitting our model and as you might have noticed i didn't scale this before fitting the model usually when you're working with a logistic regression problem you want to scale your data first but here i didn't scale it but I'm gonna do this again, but this, but the second time I do it, I'm gonna scale it. And you kind of see the big difference between scaling and not scaling your data. But just remember the back of your head for logistic regression, um, scaling your data is makes an impact. So now that we fit our model, let's use our model to um, run a prediction. So I'm um, getting predictions using model. So let's call it white bread LR is equal to LR.predict and we want to predict our S test. So we have um, fit our test data through our model and we've, got, we've gotten a prediction using our model but how do you actually know the model's prediction is good or not good how do you know how do you know the model is good that's where um accuracy 
metrics come in so if you're doing a classification problem like this you use a classification metric and if you're doing regression problem you use a regression metric so the classification metric we are going to be using to validate if our model is good or validate how good our model is will be accuracy so there are two ways to calculate accuracy that i'm gonna show you you can get accuracy directly from the model itself or you can get accuracy by using scikit to learn accuracy metric and both of them will give you the same score but still i wanted to show you how to do, do it so um let's say getting accuracy using model scoring so do you get accuracy using this method you just do the model dot score and then we want to score using our s test and then we want to score using our y test and quickly before i run this let me just show you the documentation for logistic regression so this is the documentation for logistic regression and then these are the different parameters you can input and then these are the different attributes so these are the things that are av available to you after you have run the model and then if you scroll down here you see the different methods so it has a fit method which is what we just used to fit our data our test our training data then we have the predict method which is what we use to run predictions using our test data and then we have the score method and this score method gives you the mean accuracy of the given data sets and label so these are the different methods that you can use and i'm just using three out of these so if we go ahead and run this as you can see um the accuracy score is 48 percent now an another way to get the accuracy score is using scikit learn accuracy metric and to do that you do from sklearn dot metrics import accuracy score all right now to get accuracy score using this method you do something like accuracy score parenthesis y test and then y pred lr so um here when you're doing accuracy score the first thing you provide is a true value in this case our y test and then the second thing you provide is our your predictive value which is this which is y pred r lr let's go ahead and run this to give us the same result as this as you can see the accuracy score you get from using the scoring method from the model is the same thing that you get using the accuracy score metric library so those are two ways to get accuracy score now that we've gotten the accuracy score for our logistic regression model let's compare it to our baseline prediction so if i go ahead and print this you can see that our baseline accuracy score is 45 percent and the accuracy start score using logistic regression but without using any um, standardization is 49 percent so our accuracy score for the logistic regression model is already better than the baseline model that's a good improvement and now let's go ahead and apply scaling let's go ahead and apply normalization to our model before we run the test before we run it through our model and kind of see the difference in accuracy score standardization is basically subtracting the value from its mean okay so let's say for a column it will get the mean of that column and then it will subtract each value from its mean so that the mean of that particular column is going to be zero so that's kind of how standardization work in like general terminology from sklearn dot preprocessing import standard scalar let's go ahead and instantiate our scalar scalar is equal to standard scalar and now let's go ahead and scale our data so let's call it a strain s is equal to 
scalar that fit transform our S train and then S test S is equal to scalar dot transform S test and as you can see here right when I run our scalar through our training data I did fit transform and then when I run it through our test data I just did transform so basically the first time I want and the scalar to fit um, this training data then I want to transform this training data according to the specifications here and I didn't specify anything because I'm just using the default and then I want the same transformation that occurred on the training data to occur on the test data so now that we've scaled our data let's go ahead and repeat what we did above but this time we are going to be using our scaled data so let, now let's go ahead and do lr.fit and this time let's fit s train scaled and then our y train and now let's go ahead and get predictions with it so let's call it y pred 2 is equal to lr.predict s test s And also, I forgot to do this earlier. We can get a preview of what our S string S looks like. Actually, it's no longer a um, data frame. It is now just an array. So this is what our S string S looks like versus our S string dot head versus our S string. Okay, so just wanted to give you a preview of what it looks like so now that we've gotten our prediction let's go ahead and see what our score is gonna be this time so let's just do lr.score and we want to score using s test s and then y test so as you can see our score is 54 55 percent our accuracy score is 55 percent so that's if about a 7% in improvement. That's really, really good. So basically, if we do a logistic regression without scaling our data, we get an accuracy score of about 49%. And then if we scale our data before doing logistic regression, we get an accuracy score about 55%. That's about 5 to 6% increase. And in my opinion, that's really, really good. That's like a big improvement. That's enough reason to scale your data before doing logis logistic regression. So I wanted to show you the difference of accuracy scores. Now, like, like here, if I do something like LR.coefficient, you see all these numbers. Like, what does all these numbers mean, right? What does this coefficient mean? In the next video, I am going to show you how to explain your logistic regression model. Okay, so first of all, you have cleaned your data, you have done your model, you've gotten your accuracy scores. Now you want to be able to explain the model, right? And these are the coefficients that come with logistic regression, but this is not the actual number. These are logarithmic numbers. These numbers are in in their log format okay so basically on the next video i am going to focus on explain to you why there's like so many coefficient what they mean and how to convert this logarithmic number in back into regular number and basically in general how to explain your logistic your logistic regression model and to get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, you can go to machinelearningeducation.com. And once you are here, you can just click on free data science resources. You'll be able to get access to this page. So this notebook that I use in today's video, is going to be right here in my free data science resources platform. I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts. And I just find it easier and more straightforward to take all that material and put it on the one platform. That's machinelearningeducation.com. 
and you can find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website. We are write data science blog posts. And as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to this data science blog page. And um, if you are here on evidencen.com, you can also click on free data science resources to get to this page. And as time goes by, of course, I'll add more stuff to this platform. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. Thank you and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.